You have to explain what is SB1, please. So people SB1. leave with a green card and then what happens? Yeah, it's just people who have been an out uh, mm -hmm. of the United States for more than a year and they don't have a reentry permit. It's kind of an informal process. Uh, if, you, if you still have facially valid documents, like a facially valid green card, mm -hmm. like it's not expired, um, most of the time you could still probably just board a flight and, and get back into the United States. But technically speaking, um, you could be deemed to have abandoned your residency. Uh, and in that situation, you have to, if you want to come back, uh, you have to apply for what's known as a re returning resident visa at a consulate abroad, which sometimes can be very difficult to get. And it could actually result in abandonment of your, of your green card status because you have to show that the circumstances that led to you being out of the country for more than a year uh, were essentially beyond your control. And sometimes the consular officers have very, very high standards uh, for, for what that means. And, and COVID might not be enough. It, 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 you know, in my experience, it has to be something very serious, like medical issues that were happening, you know, like a wife was dying uh, or, or- Even that's not enough. Members. Huh? Even that's not enough sometimes. I mean- Sometimes it's it, because it's discretionary, basically, and yeah. and if, if that's you're you're de deemed denied for the SB one as well, then you're you're back to to square one, basically. You're a non-immigrant again. Yeah. Um, in theory, in theory. Now there are things that you can do, some informal things that you can do to try to to push the issue, but um, it's th this really is where you get into sort of the immigration maze. Uh, territory like yeah. the maintenance of status is it can, can be very difficult stuff uh, and it and it's very deflating for for somebody who has already gone through the immigration process thinks that they have this green card and that they're in good shape now uh yeah. you know such an zero it's it's it it definitely could happen yeah i mean it's an avoidable issue i mean that's the thing with immigration another another kind of driving theme if you can avoid a future problem today, do it, right? Yeah, so I saw this docu uh, documentary, Border Security, Americans, America's Frontline. And I remember the episode where there was this woman who didn't, who married an American, then she divorced and like she got a green card, like a permanent green card already. And then she comes back to the United States and the officer looks at her really kindly and she talks about her difficult divorce and her difficult life. And he says, well, you know what? You don't need to live in the United States. You have to green, up, give up your green card. And she says, yes. And that's, and that's the end of it. Oh, yeah. So that's what happens. That can happen too, where the CBP officers will, yeah. uh, depending in, it, on mm -hmm on the port of entry. It doesn't happen everywhere, but there are certain ports of entry where yes, they, they exactly, yeah, encourage you and try to, and coerce you really totally. into, into giving up your, your green card. Um, you know, almost like it's a game for them. Like, like they're yeah. getting points on a, on a chalkboard somewhere for, yeah. for how many they can do.